Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today is a fun one because I'm kind of doing some reflecting on our last Disney trip, which was just around a little over a month ago. So if you haven't been around for that long, or if this is a completely new video to you, we just came back from a Disney trip um, that was from March 29th until April 2nd. So we were there over Easter, and that has been, that would be our third family vacation to Disney World. Um, I had also gone before my husband and I got together, um, but since him and I have been married and we've had kids and things like that, we've gone on three family vacations to Disney. Um, and we've had a lot other one, of other ones planned, but you know, within the past five years, we've had COVID and things like that. So we haven't been able to go as much as we would have liked to, um, but we still love going to Disney World and we've learned a lot from our past few trips. And so after coming home, we've had some time to kind of decompress and think about the things that had happened on our family vacation that I figured would be kind of nice to share with you guys as a regular mom on vacation or a regular family on vacation. I'm sitting outside on my back patio, so it is a little bit windy. Um, there's birds chirping, things like that. So I'm really sorry if that is bothersome. Hopefully it won't be too distracting during this video. So anyways, this is just a couple of things that I had experienced on our vacation that I figured would be kind of nice to share with you guys, like I said, as a regular mom. First thing is that I've never had this issue before and we have flown a handful of other times. And that was that I packed a normal sized pack of wipes unopened in our diaper bag as a carry-on item and it got flagged at TSA for some reason and I thought that that was really surprising and even the the people that had to check the wipes they're like I know that it's just a pack of wipes but like we still have to it was still flagged like we still have to check it so they had to open our wipes and swab it and do all of that which I thought was just really interesting because I don't think I've ever noticed that problem before on any other kind of vacations. So I figured that was kind of something to kind of be aware of. If I had known that that was something that was going to be flagged, I would have put them higher up in our diaper bag because I had them kind of buried. So I had to like refigure everything in our diaper bag. If you watched my diaper bag, like airport prep video, um, I will link that above for you. I had everything strategically placed in there in preparation for arrival day and travel and all those things and so having them have to like rifle through and get our diaper our wipes out was just like a little extra chaos that i wasn't expecting so there's my first little tip for you keep them suckers at the very top of your diaper bag so that they don't have to reconfigure your entire diaper bag when you're done through tsa i have a little bit of a cheat sheet sitting here so i'm looking at that to kind of keep me on on course here so as far as actually being in disney Something that I feel like is like such a little, it's kind of like a hack, um, specifically that I've noticed on this last trip because this is the first time we've ever done this. And that is if you are a parent who really likes to shop, but you have younger kids with you that doesn't really like to hang out and shop very much, I recommend, which this is kind of like an investment deal here. So you kind of have to like invest in this a little bit so that everything can kind of run smoothly. But it's just something that I had learned is pin trading. So for the first time, my son just turned six. So he was still five on our vacation and he's never pin traded before. None of us have ever pin traded before. And so um, we got him a starter pack. He got himself a lanyard and he started pin trading and he loved it. Um, he just really loved it. He's also really into Pokemon cards right now, which I know is like a huge fan for his age. And he also really likes the fact that he can trade those with other people. So with that being said, at all the other resorts, um, most of the shopping places, I don't know about shopping at Disney Springs necessarily, but if you wanna go shopping at like other resorts or anything like that, most of them have pin trading pin boards. Um, so they're able to kind of pick from that, but that kept our son so happy during our shopping days and our resort days and things like that because we were hopping different resorts or we were going to different resort gift shops and things like that. And he was able to pin trade at every single one of them. So huge pointer. Um, he totally did not have any problem like hopping around and shopping and doing all that because he was able to pin trade and see what all they had. And he just really loved that. So like I said, that's a little bit of an investment. Um, I think the starter pack of pins that we had originally bought him was like $35. So like I said, a little bit of an investment, 
if you get like a starter pack. I don't remember how much his lanyard was, but um, like I said, a little bit of an investment, but I think it's worth it um, because most of this past trip was a lot of resort hopping and going to different gift shops and things like that. And he did great for all of that. And he normally is not the kind to want to go shopping around and stuff. So that's my little pointer for you. As far as um, where you plan to stay, I here's the thing. We like to go and stay at the value resorts because I love the gaudiness of the value resorts. Like I really love like how Disney-esque it is with all the little statues around and just like all the things that the value resorts have. I love that. Like that's personally something that I just like really enjoy for the kids. But with that being said, um, we always end up staying at the Hollywood or I said Hollywood at the all-star movie resorts or just like the all-star resorts. Like we say, like we're cool staying at any of those. But, um, my complaint with that, which I really noticed severely this last trip is that having only one form of transportation is really like quite the complication. So, um, I only say that because like I said, we did a lot of resort hopping, a lot of shopping, like things like that. And with only having one form of transportation and that being the bus, especially when you have young kids with you, it's really, it doesn't seem like it would be that bothersome. And if you're trying to save money, like totally not that bit, not, not that big of a deal. But if you're like planning on like not staying around your resort that often, and you're not planning on like going to the parks every single day, you want to resort hop and things like that. I really recommend staying at a resort that has two forms of transfer transportation because having to collapse your stroller and unload it every single time and then reload it back up to then like get back on the bus and go to a different like doing all that is just like so it's so much it truly is so much and so to each their own but I really feel like if you use a boat, most of the time, I think only one time that we took a boat, I actually had to like collapse our stroller. Um, the monorail, you don't have to collapse your stroller. Depending on the type of stroller you have, if you use a Skyliner, you don't have to collapse your stroller. So, and obviously all of those things like just really depends if like on, you know, how busy it is and things like that. But we went during spring break, Easter weekend. And so it was like one of the like most busiest times of the year. And I've only like, while riding the boat one time is the only time I actually had to collapse our stroller. Um, otherwise, any other forms of transportation other than the bus, I could keep my stroller like upright and fully loaded. And so that was just like such a big help. So we spent a lot of time on the bus with all that being said, um, like I said, cause we did a lot of resort hopping days. So we did a monorail resort hopping day and then a Skyliner resort hopping day. Um, we also went to Epcot one day, like we just did a lot of hopping around. And so, um, I just feel like to save yourself some time, like constantly being on the bus, if you can find a resort that you feel like is in your price range that has multiple forms of transportation, you will probably feel a lot better about the time that you spend on transportation. On top of the fact that when you're not using a bus for transportation, it doesn't exactly just feel like you're like transport, like you're transporting from one place to the other. Like other things kind of feel like you're on like a ride. Like it's part of the experience and things, which the bus can be spun that way, I suppose too. But in my personal experience, it's more fun to ride the monorail or a boat or the Skyliner than it is to hop on a bus. So spent a lot of time on that one, but still worth being said. Like I said, with the resort hopping, if you buy a resort mug, they're about $22, $21.99 or something like that. They come out to be somewhere in the $22 range. If you buy a resort mug, you are able to fill that up at any resort. Now, it's specifically not for the parks. So like I'm sure if you've watched other YouTubers, they will tell you the resort mugs are not for the parks at all. You can put water in them, um, but it. I don't even know if they would like they won't fill it up for you with water. I don't think you have to get just like a paper cup and then you can pour it in there if you want to at the parks. But at the resorts, if you plan on spending some extra time at other resorts and things, you can fill your resort mug up anywhere. So I didn't know that before this trip. This is something that I learned right before we went on this trip. 
which was a huge game changer. Um, it definitely made it way more worth the money to me because we don't really spend a whole lot of time at our actual resort other than just like to swim or things like, like we're not spending a whole lot of extra time at our resorts most of the time on our trips. We like to be out at the parks or seeing other resorts or, you know, just whatever. Um, and so being at other resorts, it makes it a lot easier than to have like your own resort mug that you can fill rather than having to buy a drink if you want to drink at other resorts or whatever. So that is a pointer for you. If you get the resort mug, you can refill it at any other resorts, which another little pointer for you is if you don't want to eat food at the, at the park that you're at and you still bring your resort mug, if you take like the Skyliner or the monorail or a boat or whatever to a resort and eat at a resort, you can if, as long as it's quick service, let me clarify. At the quick service, you can fill it up. So if you're at an actual restaurant, you can't bring your refillable mug and be like, hey, can you fill, can you fill this up? Um, it has to be at the quick service, but like I said, it's still worth it to me. But if you are at the park and you wanna catch lunch somewhere else at a quick service at a, at a resort, you don't have to buy a drink if you have your resort mug. So. All that to say, like, do what you want with that information, but that was really useful to us. We got a lot of use out of our resort mugs on this past trip, which was really awesome. We always buy resort mugs, but um, we're always on the go. So I don't feel like we like always get our money's worth. I'm a coffee drinker, so I get my money's worth by getting coffee in the morning and you know, things like that. And then you don't have to drink the Florida water if you get the resort mug and you fill it up, you know, at the serving station, at your quick service station. So all that to say, the refillable mugs, that's a hack for you. I mentioned this in part of our, one of our Disney vlogs, um, but the kids meals at Disney quick service restaurants, such a game changer, you guys. So most places have a lot of the similar things for the adults menu on the kids menu. Um, as far as their quick service places go, only the price points are completely different. So in my experience, everywhere that we went for quick service that had something on the menu that was the same as the kids menu, I always got the kids menu version because it was pretty much the exact same thing as the adult version, only they charge you more for the adult version. So the side is just the same size. The main entree, um, I think is like just about the same too. I never had any issue with that. I think that it was like, it was filling. It was very, it was really filling. So don't underestimate the kids menu because you will get your money's worth and you will be full. So obviously if there's something on the adult menu that they don't have on the kids menu and you're dead set on getting that, like do it, but you will save yourself some money if they have it on the kids menu and you're like, you will save yourself some money like all around. And that's even at quick service restaurants at Disney Springs. If they've got a kids menu, you can order off of that as an adult. Um, it's just only at like sit down restaurants that you can't order off the kids menu and you will be full off that kids meal. I promise you, you will. Food allergies. So if you have a food allergy, something that I will say is if you're at a resort, that's all I can speak of, speak of as of right now because I've noticed this at two different resorts. My husband has celiac disease and so he has to have gluten-free options. So with that, we would be at the main quick service. So like, let's say Caribbean Beach. Caribbean Beach is where we first ran into this issue. So we were at Centertown Market and my husband needed something gluten-free. Well, it said that the gluten-free option was only available at Supply Glass Grill, which was about a good like 10, 15 minute walk away from Centertown Market. So he ordered his food from Supply Glass Grill, walked all the way there, ordered it, and then had to stand there and wait because they had to go to Centertown Market to pick it up because it was still made at Centertown Market, even though it says it was only available at Spyglass Grill. So he was already at Centertown Market, walked all the way to Spyglass Grill to get his gluten-free option, which was coming from Centertown Market. So he could have saved himself time just staying there. So with that being said, most restaurants, if you're getting something that's allergy friendly as a quick service at your resort and there's multiple other options around, if it's gonna be a food allergy, it's going to come from the main hub of the resort. So just something to keep in mind so that you're not like running all around town trying to get your food that's allergy friendly. 
stay at the main hub because it's all going to be made and prepared there to be like allergy safe. On my note, I have more is more on your stroller and that is the truth. So if you watched my stroller assembly video, you will probably have seen that I had like our diaper clutch by Petunia Pickle Bottoms that was going to be hanging off of it. And then we had like the stroller caddy and then we were going to have the diaper bag down below and like all this is going on. When I was talking about the bus and like needing multiple forms of transportation, it comes back to your stroller. So if you have kids with stuff that needs to be on the stroller for them, um, the way that my husband and I had to do it is one of us had to take the kids and the other one had to take the stuff with the stroller. And like, that was just how we had to make it work because when you have more stuff in your stroller or on your stroller, it's that much harder to like break it down and put it all together. Like it's that much more time consuming because like when you're waiting in line and you're waiting for a bus, like let's say it says it's going to come like in 15 minutes, sometimes it'll show up in like five minutes or 10 minutes. And then you're like, your, you don't want to be holding your kids for like 15 minutes potentially waiting for this bus that says it's going to come in 15 minutes so you're kind of waiting until the bus arrives to break it down and then the line's moving because not everybody has a stroller with kids and whatever and you're like okay like hurry up hurry up and you're like rushing and then you're like trying to get everything off and it's just a whole mess so my point of saying is more is more because I see a lot of time People talking about like all these different intricate things that they have, which might make it easier when you're at the park. Don't get me wrong. Like when you're at the park, it might make it easier. But if you're not planning on like having it fully assembled and like all this stuff going on, like that's just a lot. It's a lot because eventually you're going to have to unload that whole stroller, fold it all up, get on the bus, hold on to all these things. And then like I couldn't even imagine doing that as a like by myself with my two kids with all the stuff that we had going on. Like. I looked like a crazy woman. I had like my mom bag, which was like a front hanging bag. I had a backpack on, I had resort mugs. I had the stroller holding on to. I had like diaper clutch in my arms. And like, I mean, I was like full, like I was like really like holding on to everything. And it was just a lot. It was so, it was so much. So my point in saying is like, yes, you can be super duper prepared by like bringing all these extra things and all this other stuff, but like, eventually you're going to have to be responsible for like unloading all of that stuff out of your stroller and holding on to all of it and getting up on this and it sometimes the buses are really crowded so like just something to keep in mind like if you can condense those things down and not bring everything under the sun for your kids every moment of the day do it because like for one it's overstimulating at disney world like at disney parks disney everywhere and disney world is kind of like it can eventually get overstimulating so like constantly bringing like coloring books and coloring pads and fun things to do while you're waiting in line and like all this stuff like that's a lot like your kids don't always need to be like constantly stimulated every moment of the day that's just my opinion obviously you know your kid nobody knows your kids like you do so if your kid constantly needs that then like okay you know that about your kid and that's cool you do what you you do what you do so this was a last minute a last minute stay so we originally were planning on going in May and then we found out we weren't going to be able to make it in May. So then we moved it all the way over until March at the end of March and early April, just to make sure that we could go and make it work. So with that, we, we didn't have enough time to like get a stroller for both kids that was going to work. Like I said, my son is six now and my daughter is 18 months old. So it's quite a big, like I say quite a big, it's not that big of an age gap, but it's still an age gap. So my son is a lot bigger than my daughter. So finding a double stroller that would fit the both of them really well would have, it would have been a little bit of like a trial and error type situation. And I didn't feel like stressing myself out with doing the trial and errors to find the perfect stroller before going on a big trip. On top of the fact that I like kept asking my son, I was like, do you think you're going to want to walk the whole time? Or do you think you're going to want to ride? And he's like, I don't need to ride. I don't need to ride. You know, whatever. Which to his defense, he didn't feel like he needed to ride in the stroller. Like he never really asked like, hey, can you hold me? Or hey, can I ride in the stroller? It was more like he was just tired by the end of the day. Like by the end of like the evening, he was kind of just like, I want to go back to the resort. Like I want to go back to the resort. I want to swim. I want to just hang out. Like he was just kind of done. Whereas like, I feel like if we had a double stroller to where he could have rode around a little bit and relaxed a moment and you know, that kind of thing, he would have lasted longer while we were out and about. 
So my point in saying that is, unless your kids are teenagers, bring a stroller for them. <laughs> I don't know exactly which stroller, stroller to bring for them, but I would just recommend like trying some out and having strollers for them because Henry, when he was able to ride in the stroller, was able to fall asleep. Like he fell asleep almost right away. And you know, like it, it was helpful for him. So looking to the future now, we will always have a stroller that he can sit in. Um, and that Briar can also sit in, which is my daughter, my son, my daughter, double strollers all around. I will always have a double stroller now <laughs> because he was just done by the middle of the day. Like at least like late afternoon, he was like, let's go back to the resort. I want to hang out, that kind of a thing. Something that applied to us, which if you don't have like super young kids or if you don't have milk drinkers or you know, whatever, this probably won't apply to you. But this was something that I found was useful for us is that they don't have full gallons of milk at the resort, which I had thought I had seen them in the past, which maybe they did or maybe they didn't, I'm not sure, but I thought that they did. But don't be fooled by the little boxes of milk that they have in the like quick service area. You need to go to the gift shop and get a half gallon if you like need milk because they will charge you almost $3 for a carton of milk, like a little like box of milk. Whereas it's like $3 and some change for a half gallon in the gift shop. So word to the wise, if you have milk drinkers or babies or whatever who needs like milk at night, like my kids do, get it from the gift shop. You'll save yourself some money. I thought that this was really interesting. So we have magic hands. My husband and I went to Disney World for our honeymoon, I <laughs> said wedding anniversary, um, our honeymoon in 2019. And so we got magic bands with that trip and we held on to them all this time. And I brought them along with us so that like I could change it out with my outfit and you know, whatever. And I had called ahead and I was like, am I going to be able to use these? Or are they going to actually work? Or like, do I need to just save my space and not bring extra magic bands? And they were like, no, they'll totally work. They're like, I have some from like 2015 that I still use to this day because they just, they still work. So if you have old magic bands that you either for one, you just don't feel like buying new magic bands, or if you like want to interchange them with other magic bands with outfits or, you know, whatever, they will still work. So word to the wise it's really worth knowing to me it was worth no knowing for myself because I was gonna buy new magic bands which eventually we still will buy the new magic band pluses is not what they're called I feel like that's right eventually we will buy those but I didn't want to buy them because like I said last minute trip we only went to one one park we only went to Epcot during this trip so I didn't want to buy them and not be able to like use them and see what all they can do at like the magic kingdom and stuff like that so we do plan on going back eventually hopefully sooner than later and so um when we do we are going to be getting the new magic bands if you plan on traveling during spring break specifically to disney world i highly recommend getting a really early flight trip and then a really early return flight because both of them were nearly empty we were able to board with group A, which usually we have to wait until like between group A and group B when you can like board with your kids because the way it usually goes, at least with Southwest, let me just clarify, we use Southwest. And in the past few trips, when we've taken Southwest, we can board with our kids early between group A and group B. But with us having such an early arrival flight and then a late return flight we were able to board with group a both times um because there was just like it was not a full a full flight either one of them so word to the wise like specifically during spring break because i was hearing crazy stories before we left sorry about the wind and it was talking about how people are arriving to the airport like three and a half hours before their flight because they were afraid of missing them or like flights were delayed or whatever it was that was going on. We had no issues and we had really early flights and really late flights. So for instance, our, uh, our arrival flight took off at 520 in the morning and then our departure flight arrived home at midnight. So like really early and really late, but it was worth it because we didn't have any kind of issues with uh, travel at all whatsoever. It was seamless, very nice. <sighs> Lastly, this is solely just my opinion, mine and my family's opinion. 
And that is we will not be going to Disney World for Easter again. And that is because we, for one, have kids. We have young kids and it just did not feel like Easter. We like to, like we have our family traditions. We go to church and then we have family over. We do like a brunch. Like we do all these things normally for Easter. And it did not feel like Easter at Disney. Um, we didn't have a park day that day because I was trying to have our one park day on like the lowest crowd day. Uh, so it was the day after Easter for us. And so it just really didn't feel like it. There was one thing that we did that kind of felt like Easter and there was like Easter events happening here and there, but none of them really like felt like Easter. It just really did not feel like Easter to me at all whatsoever. It just felt like another day on vacation, which is fine, but I just kind of learned my lesson and that is that we will not be going for Easter again. So if you have deep family tradition for any holidays that you feel like you just really enjoy them and you know like you're okay with putting them aside for your disney day whatever second guess it a little bit please i'm begging you because it it just really did not i felt like oh we can find like something to do for easter and disney you know surely they'll have this or that or whatever and they didn't <laughs> they just didn't and like nothing against them. I did hear that they did have an Easter bunny at Epcot that day. Um, and they did have like a couple of other things in Magic Kingdom. But as far as just like normal traditions go, if you are a holiday traditionalist, like I like to call myself, um, don't do it. Just have your holiday at home and then go to Disney at another day because it just didn't feel like it for us. Like I said, that's only my opinion. Um, mine and my family's opinion that we all kind of agreed with that. Um, so yeah, a little bit of backstory on that for me is that, like I said, I was just in a hurry to make sure that we were able to go on our Disney trip. So I moved it from May to a week that was like affordable and like quick to book and like seamlessly have it done. And I didn't even really pay attention to the fact that it was over Easter weekend. So that was a planning flaw on my end, but I figured like, oh, it'll be great. You know, we'll have a holiday in Disney World. And I was slightly disappointed. So there you go. So that's all I had. I think that was about 12 different things. That was all just things that I, like I said, we've been back for about a month or so. And those are all things that my husband and I kind of talked about since returning and reflecting on our vacation. We, were, we all kind of like, him and I were both pretty much on the same on the same page as far as the things that I've listed off here um we all we both felt like it was really worth really worth saying because I don't feel like you hear about that kind of stuff all too often and if you do like sorry if I'm repeating repeating it <laughs> I apologize but this is just like me like I actually live this. this is something that I like truly deeply feel so yeah Hopefully this was helpful for you and helpful to you. If you have a family vacation at Disney World coming up, I am so excited for you. That's awesome. I'm chomping down at the bit for us to go back again because I just always am. So anyway, I think I will have one more Disney themed video to come out um, before I end the series on this past vacation. So if you are interested in seeing that, stick around with me. And um, until then, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.